Tabassum Adnan comes from the Swat Valley in northern Pakistan, a region that was previously a stronghold of pro-Taliban extremist groups. Married as a child bride at 13 to a man 30 years older, she was physically and psychologically abused. By the time she was 20, she had three children, and at age 33, she finally got a divorce. Being homeless and having no means of support, she attended a local women's empowerment program. This inspired her to get involved in local decision making, so she tried to join the male-only traditional council, but was rejected. These male jirga make decisions against women, without their consent or presence, and they bypass the local justice system. Traditionally, women have been used to settle disputes between men and traded in marriage to absolve debts, in claims of honor, and as retribution for crimes, and these practices continue today. To make matters worse, those who commit brutal acts against women are never charged. In Tabassum's view, women are excluded from decision making because men in her society want to maintain their dominance. For this reason, they don't allow women in these councils. This spurred Tabassum to found the Quendo Jirga or Sisters Council in 2013. This 25 all-female group began by providing legal assistance to seek justice for women. They also pressure the police and court system to act where previously they would turn a blind eye. As can be imagined, the male jirgas were strongly opposed to the Quendo Jirga, as were many women. However, in 2014, the perception began to shift after Tabassum and the group organized a protest in response to a child being raped and the authorities failing to act. This resulted in suspects being apprehended and for the first time in Pashtun history, a woman, Tabassum, was asked to sit on the male jirga and assist with dispensing justice. In July of that year, the Quendo Jirga lobbied for the passage of a law prohibiting child marriages. Despite strong protests from religious factions, by December, the Punjab Assembly unanimously passed a resolution to work on amending the law. Since their first success with the men's Jirga, Tabassum has been invited to participate on other cases. Further advocacy work has been done to protect women's rights and protect them from violence, particularly honor killings, dowry harassment, murder and torture, such as acid attacks and maiming, mostly at the hands of the husband or in-laws, and in some cases so extreme that it has resulted in death. Before, these cases would often be overlooked by the judicial system. However, as the Quendo Jirga successfully gains justice for survivors and the families of those who have died, the era of impunity is ending. With the use of their in-house legal team, they fight many cases in court. Now there are 20 groups in the network. Issues are brought to the attention of these groups and then channeled to the main council, which includes the heads of all the groups. The council also invites the male jerkers and local authorities to their programs. This has led to weekly meetings with the public prosecutor to share issues and cases related to the violation of women and girls' rights. The council is lobbying for the provincial government to legislate for the domestic violence bill and for police to be trained adequately. They have been involved in many cases of rape and forced marriages, abuse and torture and murder to ensure that these crimes are prevented or that justice is brought to bear on the perpetrators. The council also provides support for the survivors. With each victory, the movement gains momentum. Where victims were afraid to speak out, now they become braver with each success. The council also lobbies for free education for girls and the rights of women and girls to health care, whilst linking women to entrepreneurial training and microfinancing. All the council's activities are done on a volunteer basis without any funding from outside sources. Now that the jirga has gained prominence, men even come to the council requesting assistance with issues. Doing this work comes with great risk, including threats to beat her up and a fatwa against her. After returning home last year from the US, where she was presented with the State Department's International Women of Courage Award, threats of violence against her escalated. Yet despite these threats, late last year she became a member of the District Dispute Resolution Council, another first for women in the region. She continues to do her job fearlessly. 
Recently, she has turned her attention to the empowerment of the transgender community to assist them in understanding and fighting for their rights.